Welcome to Forge Drops. This is Lilian Silva. I'm the Forge Specialist for Clemson University. Today we'll be talking about understanding Forge quality. Um, are both for uh, pastures, uh, so various forages and also hay. So let's get started. When we're talking about forage quality, we need to understand what that means. So in general, uh, we'll be talking about um, just the concentration of nutrients on a given uh, forages uh, feed and uh, their, the ability of that forage to really support animal performance and uh, also the, the intake that the animals will have for that given forage. Uh, so, in general, when we're looking at animal performance, we will be thinking about, for example, uh, milk production or uh, average daily gain or, or some of the just uh, measurements for animal performance. Then, when we talk about nutrient concentration, general, generally, we are going to be thinking about how much nitrogen uh, that forage has in terms of concentration, and also um, other minerals and uh, the fiber fractions, which will be impacting the ability of that animals to digest and to pass that forage through their system and really digest and um, absorb the nutrients that are in those uh, feeds. Then when we are really looking at understanding the forage quality, uh, we will use that information to base our supplementation requirements. So when we're looking at uh, how much supplement we need to offer uh, to an animal, we first need to understand how much uh, nutrients those uh, feed uh, the either the forage or the the, the the hay that you're going to have that animal grazing or uh, feeding, uh, how much those have in terms of nutrients. So we can really balance how much of supplementation you need to be uh, adding to that ratio. And uh, all these should be based as well on the requirements for the animal uh, species, the animal category, the, the time that the animal is on its own uh, life, uh, because those requirements change throughout the, um, the growing uh, period or the lactation uh, period for a cow so, uh, or for other uh, milking uh, species. So this is going to be really important to really adjust and match those needs to the supplementation and nutrients that the animals will be uh, getting from the, the, the feed. Then some of the factors that we are going to look that will influence forage quality, um, just as a, like really general um, main factors are the, the forage species, the, the management practices, and some of the environmental environmental conditions as well can be impacting the forage quality that we're going to be able to get those uh, materials. So just uh, an example here, when we talk about forage type, we can have an, as an example, legumes versus grasses, for example. So just in general, legumes will have a higher concentration of crude protein and uh, then most warm season uh, perennial forages, uh, grasses, for example. And uh, same, uh, same thing for some of the annual cool season forages, they tend to be higher quality than uh, warm season perennial grasses. Uh, and also uh, just there, there's, a lot of other concepts uh, involved behind this. And uh, if you want to learn more and understand more about this um, physiological and morphological um, difference between warm season perennial grasses and uh, other species as legumes and uh, annual species, I advise you to look on the YouTube channel for the forages physiology. A video 
and uh, take a look on that and uh, really learn a little more about uh, some of the difference between these uh, species. But uh, warm season perennial grasses, they have higher fiber concentration than uh, legumes uh, in comparison. And uh, just coming back to some of the factors impacting the forage quality, we will also have management practices impacting, impacting that. Uh, some of them are uh, the time of um, the regrowth interval that we're going to give. So especially if you leave the forages to get really mature, that's going to be really uh, impacting how much fiber uh, those plants accumulated, for example, among other things. Uh, then the fertilization plan that you're using for that forage is going to be really relevant to how much nutrients uh, they will be having uh, accumulating, as well as uh, what has been the uh, sorry, amendments that you have done if you're really correcting uh, the page based on parts uh, routinely so you can really make sure that the nutrients that you're putting there are actually becoming available for the plants to consume them. Uh, some of other factors as well will be the cutting high, especially um, uh, here are a couple of really important points. So one of them is uh, if you're leaving behind enough residual leaf area to allow the plants to really have a good regrow after that, but also if you cut, uh, and this is the opposite at the end. So if you cut too low, so uh, most of the warm season forage uh, grasses that we're going to be maintaining, uh, we generally have a recommendation for four inches of cutting high or if they are under grazing for um, stubble high. So if you're cutting those four, those grasses below four, some of um, some some producers sometimes they go for two inches or even lower than that. You may be dragging some of the soil and uh, other um, things that are on the soil surface with that hay that you're cutting, and that's gonna be a source of contamination. Uh, really um, impacting that forage quality that you're going to be able to have from that material. Then other really important thing is the post-harvest on those uh, cases of cutting hay, the, the post-harvest management that you're going to be doing, just because this is going to be um, the time that we should be trying to keep the quality that's the red there. But uh, it's important to know that we are not going to be able to improve the forage quality of that hay after harvested. We can only decrease it by the management that we may be applying post-harvest. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you're leaving your uh, bales uh, exposed to rainfall on uh, direct contact with the soil and then um, also on areas where uh, water log uh, for a prolonged period of time, all those factors will be impacting the quality that you're going to have when you are going to be feeding that hay later on. Uh, these are just some really um, basic examples. There are several other things that we could be talking about, but these are some of the things I wanted to really um, talk and uh, emphasize on today's video. There will be two more videos related to this topic, so please make sure that you come back next week and um, catch up with the following one. I appreciate you watching this video. If you have more, uh, more uh, interest in other forage and um, livestock-related topics, please Check out the Forge Drops Facebook and YouTube ch uh, channels. And if you have any questions, my email is, is here on the screen. I appreciate you watching this video. Have a great one.